White is one of the largest and oldest uh, architect practices in Scandinavia. And we've always had societal issues at the heart of what we do. We started in the 1950s with um, building the sustainable society in Sweden and we're still building the sustainable society today. The job hasn't been done yet. So sustainability and enabling us to thrive and live in harmony with the planet and with nature is at the core of our mission as architects. And therefore there is a big opportunity to re reduce carbon emissions by how we design buildings and the places that we work with. We have uh, uh, our own target that by 2030 every project that we work on should be either climate neutral or climate positive. And that's an, a very big ambitious goal. So we can't achieve that on our own. We achieve it through collaboration, both internally and externally across many disciplines. And what we see is that um, technologies such as photovoltaics and building integrated photovoltaics are a new technical development that can help us achieve our climate goals, both as a company and as a society. If we're going to incorporate photovoltaics as a new technology, it has to be visible, it has to be um, on the facade or the roof of the building, and therefore we need to find ways to integrate that in an aesthetically appealing way. And to me, that's a new architectural opportunity. And we know that society is facing enormous challenges now because of the use of energy in buildings, the use of energies in our cities, the emissions that come from the use of that energy is threatening our planet and threatening the way of survival on this planet. We know that. We can see the results of the IPCC reports. We can see that carbon emissions from the built environment sector is a threat to survival. And therefore, as architects, we think it's really critical to begin to address that challenge as a societal challenge. And we think that, in my case, that is one of the big issues of our day. How can we actually create a way of building and living on the planet that is in line with planetary boundaries? And the way we create our buildings is an answer to that question. The aesthetic dimension is really important. Otherwise, architects won't adopt that technology if it cannot also meet that twin ambition of technical performance and architectural quality. If we can create positive energy buildings by using energy positive glazing in our buildings, that is a really interesting way for me to address that challenge. So the Uppsala office building that White has designed for our client Vasa Kronan, in a way has tried to address some of these challenges. And one of the first things is its location. It is located right next to the main railway station in Uppsala that connects the north of Sweden to the south of Sweden. People can get to and from this building by means of public transport very easily. So it's not increasing the amount of vehicles on the roads in Uppsala. But then once you've chosen that site, how do you create a building that responds to that location architecturally, but also environmentally? The client that we work with, Vasa Kronan, is funded by some of the major pension funds in Sweden. And they have ambitions to ensure that the future is, is good for their people that they're investing money for. So they have a, a joint ambition like we have in terms of improving the environmental performance of the buildings that they invest in and, and own. So together we had an ambition to see how far can we go with this building in terms of sustainability performance. And it starts, for example, with what the building's made from. That building has a solid timber structure and it is seven stories high. That's the largest solid timber construction for an office building in Scandinavia. And the benefit of that is that by not using steel and concrete in the structure, you're using a sustainable material, timber, but also you're reducing the carbon emissions from the construction, the embodied carbon as we call it. Parts of the facade are covered in natural slate, which is a natural material with a low carbon uh, impact as well. What we also then look at is how to make the building as energy efficient as possible by making sure that it's got good insulation levels, etc. And then you go further. You say, well, how can we make the energy that we're going to need to run the lighting in the building, to, to run the ventilation systems and the other services in the building, the electricity we need and the heating, how can we get that from renewable sources that don't have an impact on the environment? So we started to look at so photovoltaics as a way of generating electricity within the facade and the roof of that building to an extent that a large proportion of the electricity that's needed for operating the building is now generated within the facade and the roof of the building itself. So pushing the boundaries of energy production in the building, that is going in the right direction. We would like to get to the point where our buildings are 
energy positive. I wouldn't say it's 100% regenerative today, but we've shown some of the steps necessary along the way. And the research that we're doing together with the Be Smart project is helping us to understand that and understand what steps we can take in the future to go even further. So this building isn't energy positive, but actually the next one could be.